Uh, checkpoint video, game and development, sin space drone runners, um, overview of synthesizer sequencer. So this is the social key, and I'm selected right now on the piano as my as my social mode. So at first glance, it it does what you'd expect. Um, so it's just it's just a built-in little piano, and the samples that you're seeing here are what's being played, and that's from the so-called oscilloscope, which you can turn on and off. So these three buttons here are like little extra gizmoids. So this one patch gives you a list of all of the instruments you have defined. This one called Groove has a list of all the songs that you've got. And the idea is that these guys here are just shortcuts to that big list of instruments. So we're on one right now, which is called, whatever that's called. But I have some others. Okay, so, great. What we wanted to see if we could record was the current state of the um, synthesizer. So in the background, I've just got the space game, and I'll probably blow up there in a moment. Note the new pain flashes, that's, that's new. Um, now when you're playing, if you turn on your patch panel, showing you all the patches, all the instruments that you've got defined. One of the things you can see is this little keyboard here. And what that means is the synthesizer understands a total of five octaves. But space constraints don't allow all five octaves to be shown down here. So if you wanted to hear just the highest notes, or something in the middle, And I don't know what, I'm not sure what the microphone on this camera is going to do with that. Okay, uh, does not look super sharply focused, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So we, we start with some instrument, like uh, this one. And we, now we explore what makes it sound like that. And um, can you see that? Yeah, well, that's going to work. Um, so basically, this these are the knobs and settings that define what that sounds like. The along, uh, along the top here are six tabs, which select one of six contour generators. And all a contour generator is is a shape, a time-varying shape. And the idea is when you hit a key on the keyboard it starts this shape and the shape then goes up and then down and then down you know it just it just plays that out and the only variation in that is that sometimes well, i guess this instrument doesn't have it so off here in knobs there's something called sustain and if i turn sustain on and then go back to synth we'll see that the line is now green for the first half and then red for the second half and it it doesn't have to be at the halfway point you can you can drag these things around anywhere you want um, but the idea is that uh, when I press a key, it starts the contour playing. And if I hold the key down, it will play all the way to this point, at which point it will stop following the contour and it'll just hold at that point, sustain, sustaining whatever amplitude I had. Let's turn that guy back on. You can see the waveform also. Pinch it in there. 
pretty sinusoidal, which makes, well, never mind. But if we go back to knobs and turn off sustain, go back to synth, the red went away, and now it's just going to play the whole green line. Even if I hold the key down, it's not going to, it's not going to sustain, it's just going to be a pulse. And that pulse, you can see here, it's uh, 400 milliseconds. The width of this blue region is 400 milliseconds. And if you like, you can come over here and uh, you can adjust that. You, know, turn that off. you can adjust that so that now that width is 2,000. 2,000. So now that same, I just hold the key down once. Or I'll put it this way, I'll just tap it once. And it takes two seconds to play out. Which is not very useful, but sometimes I think you usually want it like this. Um, and now let's, uh, let's explore those filters. So for that, let's go to knobs again, sorry, and turn sustain on again. It's just easier. Okay, so now what's actually going on? These nine guys here are the harmonic oscillators, where this one labeled 1x is the fundamental frequency. So if I, let's see, how do I do this? Yeah, okay. See, these guys are all red. Generally speaking, that means I have tapped on them to mute them. So if I tap again, it'll be unmuted. Tap again, it'll be muted. So if I mute that one as well, the only thing we can hear now is the harmonic. So when we do this, we get a sine wave, basically. Now if I untap the third harmonic, we now get a slightly more complicated looking signal. Oh, except we don't. <laughs> well, I'm not going to explain that to you just yet. Okay, let's try it one more time. Hmm. Are we up at some high frequency now? I'm sort of at a loss to explain how. Oh, it's just too quiet. Decibels are tricky. Okay, so now this is the first and second harmonic together. And now you can see a difference. And not only do you see a difference in the waveform at this level, but if you zoom out, you can actually see some interesting. Well, sometimes you can see some interesting macro structure. Um, okay, but just because you couldn't see it before, it doesn't mean it wasn't there. And less is more in the world of audio. So. As you could see, I can change the shape of this pulse. So let's say I want to make it more like that. Let's say I want to make it more like this. And maybe make it a little louder up there. And maybe after I release it, maybe I want to go quiet for a minute and then come back with a bump at the end. Maybe I want to come back for a big bump at the end. Okay. 
that could actually be useful for something like a you know, mandolin string or something where you pluck it and then there's like a secondary there's like a pulse that goes up to the thing and comes back down and anyway and again so you have multiple of these envelope generators and what can you do with them well the first thing you can do is you can say well I can dial up my own mix of um, you know frequencies yeah that sounds different so just the even harmonics And let's bind them all to this same envelope generator so that they're all coming on and off the same amount. Okay, and so as you see in this envelope, everybody sort of starts up kind of slow, right? It's kind of a stupid envelope, but let's make a set the second envelope. He starts up really fast, but nobody is bound to him. So let's let's bind the really higher harmonics. If it's green, it's bound to the currently selected guy. So now the the higher harmonics are going to come up with this fast attack, whereas the lower harmonics are going to come up with a slow attack. So what's that going to sound like? Let's make it a little more obvious by giving us a little bit more of that. Again, be careful here. We get sort of a little chime hit at the beginning. I don't know if that's the right word. Okay, so let's say, oh, well, we like this. It, uh, we could see using this somewhere. Hate to lose it. And besides, maybe we'd like to research with this later on, see if we can turn it into something that actually sounds good. We go to the top tab, patch, and we're going to clone it. So now we're going to make a copy of the instrument that started off being called Celeste, but with our modifications to it. And we're going to call it um, Glock. I'm sort of a glockenspiele. We'll call it Glock. And you can get some more characters here if you like. And this name is just a convenience. Uh, two instruments with the same name uh, are still two, two different instruments. It'll be assigned an asset ID. On it. Okay, so this is it now. It's the Glock 1. And I don't know if this is a bug or not, but I'm here to remind myself to fix it if it is. Sometimes it helps to, re to select on something else and then select back on it. And that's a superstition I picked up over time that I should debug. If It may not be true anymore, but it definitely was true. And we can go to something else. Come back to us. And let's say, well, let's replace our guitar with our, with our Glock 1. So we select the Glock 1, and then we, I forgot which one it was already. Okay, sorry. Select the Glock 1, and then we long press. Now, this is the Glock 1. That's a gun name, isn't it? Sorry, that wasn't intentional. Okay, uh, so that's the basic behavior of adding together different um, sounds and how envelope generators can be used to control how soon particular set of sounds is added to the mix and another, oh I've got my reverb on no wonder it's quiet so turn the reverb off
So can I give a demonstration of reverb? Well, this reverb is set very dry. If I, if I move it to wet, you'll hear more of the effect we're talking about. You know what I need? I need a, I need a patch that's more of a pulse. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just binding all of the, this should be a roughly sawtoothy shape. So now you can hear the reverb. So if I turn the verb off, you just hear the pulse. If I put the verb on, you hear the pulse with echoes. And if I make it really wet, whoops. Okay, this this will this will overdrive. This will howl. It's actually doing pretty well. So basically, fade versus ring is is how much feedback goes back in. So if there's a lot of feedback, it'll start to ring. If there's insufficient feedback, it'll fade really fast. And then dry and wet is just a mix of the original signal dry um, with no reverb at all. And then the just wet, no original signal. Which feels laggy. And you mix them together. And then how much reverb do you get? Well, this is a range control. This 15 foot to 15 foot. So I've got it set so there's there's no range at all and the wall is 15 feet away and this is the kind of echo you get from a 15 foot away wall if i were to change that to a wall that's uh, 950 feet away you'll hear just classic echo And then if I make it a room that's 300 to 950, you'll hear echoes anywhere in that range. And in normal performance space, you'd have something off of the heads of the people in front <laughs> and then a back wall. Oh, 700, I'm sorry, I'm at 100. Can't really see this. I turn it off. Okay, and then let's go back to our Glock. And there our Glock with reverb. Okay, and there, there's a glissando effect, which doesn't, well. Glissando you don't usually do on polyphonic keyboards. Or it has some limitation like, um, it just picks the leftmost key or something. Do something more individual per key, but I'm not saying it sounds good. But it's there if you want it. That's pretty good. Um, RC attack. It gives you more a more traditional um, wave shape. Detune. What was this? I just added that, and I already forgot what it was.
I guess I'm trying to give the illusion that those, those uh, oscillators are not phase locked. But I'm not sure. So this FM, AM, and um, filter stuff is interesting. Um, if you start again with, uh, well, yeah. just want to cover the basic mechanics of how the knobs work. So this is pretty good. Okay, so these are low frequency oscillators, LFOs. It just means, and in my case, they're just sine waves. So they are, uh, you know, uh, under a thousand hertz, usually a handful of hertz, two to three hertz kind of, kind of things. And what I can do is I can, first of all, at this level, I can pick, um, let's say I want to have some, some AM, okay, some amplitude modulation. So what I can do is I can dial it in. And for this, you, you, all of these keys are decibel oriented, and you just uh, tap inside and you know, hold it, start inside, and then drag up or down to change the, the value. Um, and and even in the case of AM, a bigger value here means that there will be more AM, you know, deeper modulation. Now it still needs to be or can be bound to an envelope generator, so I'm going to bind it to this far right. Well, actually. Dung, dung, dung. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to do it to the third one from the end. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Okay, so now it's green. When we when we select this one, it's green. He's the only one that's green. He's the only one that's bound to this envelope generator. So now we're going to, we're doing AM modulation, right? So what does that mean? Hear that? Hear that? Woo, 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 Over here in knobs, we see our AM is set to zero to twenty hertz. 0 to 20 hertz. And what that translates to is this envelope, when it's all the way at the bottom, it's going to be 0 hertz. When it's all the way at the top, it's going to be 20 hertz. So what this envelope should sound like is almost instantly 20 hertz and then pretty quickly ramping down to lower and lower amounts. And because I've got sustain, that green-red transition, which you can see, um, at that point, that's when I hold the key down for a long time, that's the speed at which it's really going. So if I were to drag this down to, say, here, we'd expect it to be slower. And if I were to drag it way up here, we'd expect it to be higher. And again, that's higher at the sustain point. When I let go, it's going to follow the rest of the curve and, and do its thing. Now I turn the AM off by tapping it. If it's red, I've muted it. So that's just our original note again. So let's now give it some FM. And again, if we want any FM at all, we have to dial it up. And the more we put in, the, the more it'll more effect it'll have. So uh, we're the fourth one down, so let's use the fourth one down envelope generator. Oh, sorry. <laughs> FM. So I hold down on FM for a few seconds and it turns green. So now it's the only one that's green when that envelope generator is selected. Now FM, um, well, it's the same basic idea. And again, we go to knobs. It has its own low frequency oscillator, which is also set to 0 to 20 hertz. Let's knock that down to 0 to, zero to 7 hertz. So when the, when the envelope is all the way down here, it'll be zero hertz of frequency modulation. When it's all the way up here, it'll be seven hertz of frequency modulation. So turning that on really fast is kind of bad sounding here. And it's going to, again, because I've got sustain on this guy, it's going to hold at the sustain point. So if we're going to experiment, experiment with the sustain. Okay, so that's about halfway, so half of seven, so that should be about three and a half hertz. And 
it's a, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the, the frequency modulation appears as the sine waves getting closer or farther apart, closer together when they're higher frequency. Sort of see them shimmying. Um, and again, if I do this all the way up there, it should be 7 hertz. And all the way down here, be lower. So what uh, you would normally use this for, let's take this back to 15. What you normally use this for would be like vibrato on a string or something. So you might want to say, well, for the first part, you know, early on in the hit, it, it, uh, there's a little bit of vibrato, but then during the sustain, it's fairly slow. And then when you let go, it maybe has a little, that 20 is too much. I don't know. The point is you can you can do interesting things. And if you increase the amount of FM, and if you decrease it, so it's just a subtle effect. You can still hear it. Turn it off. Turn reverb on at the same time. Okay. Um, so that's FM. And then filter works a little differently. Um, you still dial it in. But now you don't uh, it, you don't get to just tap it red. And let's bind it to this far right envelope generator. Let's turn the uh, reverb off. Um, so the filter right now is not, it, you, we haven't selected a kind of filter. So if we tap it once, it'll switch to low. So now this is a low pass filter which is this envelope. So what's going to happen is it's initially only going to allow through low frequencies and early on, you know, as it ramps up, it'll allow through higher frequencies. Now we're hearing that kind of interesting chirp because of that thing I did with, I think, yeah. We still have this uh, two envelopes Let's get rid of that for a moment, just to make it less confusing. Make sure everybody's bound to just that first envelope. Make sure the only color changes we're hearing are due to the filter. And again, it's this envelope generator. So, um, at the sustain point, is where it has the effect here. Oh, sorry. So this also has a uh, low fast, uh, low frequency oscillator, but I don't want to use it right now. I'm going to set the range zero to zero. And what that means is it, the low frequency oscillator is always zero hertz. So it ends up using just the envelope. So instead of looking at the output of the sine wave of the oscillator, it just raw looks at the envelope. And let's also, let's go back to our knobs and change the width of our, uh, let's turn sustain off. 
Okay, so now this whole thing lasts about a second. And we can, um, what is, I don't know. Okay, let's, let's get rid of anything weird here. Let's just have this be the simplest. In fact, let's just make this really, really simple. Now, the danger of this is uh, the filters are not stable, right? It's like filters, I guess the way to explain it is to say that they can add amplification, whereas everything else pretty much just adds attenuation. Okay. So this is the envelope that controls the sound. So here, let's turn the filter off. Step through. Okay, so with no filter. Okay, so, and let's turn all of these guys back on. And bind them all to the same. Okay. That's organ noise. And, um, So very simple amplitude envelope, you know, very simple mix of frequencies. If I just tap the key, I get a long, boring note. Now we go back to our envelope generator for the um, low pass filter. And you can hear changes. Now, how much does it change? Well, it's a function of how much you've dialed in. You have to kind of fuck her, sorry, mess around with it. Start to sound a little bit like a cat. So just getting back to the filter. Just just up halfway. It's made a pretty big difference. So let's let it stay high a little longer before coming back down. Why was it going higher? Whoa, see? So there we added a little bit of gain and it went unstable and it generated whatever this is. Wow. Um, and that'll, you know, that'll hurt your ears. <laughs> so tread carefully with filter. Okay, so that's the low pass filter. Then there's also the high pass filter and it works the opposite way so that when it, the higher this goes, I mean, it's always letting through the high pass, and the higher this goes, the more low pass it lets through. And again, because Anyway, you use filters for... Everything else about the synthesizer is just additive, right? So you're taking simple sine waves and adding them together in certain weighted, weighted combinations. But the filter stuff is, you know, just math. Um, going crazy. There's a bandpass filter, so this will take the center. And then there's a notch. It just allows everything except a bit in the middle. No. Wow. And now noise, and we'll dial in some noise. And we'll dial in the max. And 
will bind it to this second envelope generator down. And again, we don't have to, but you know, it's less confusing. Um, and uh, obviously I've done this before because this is the envelope I would have put in. So noise you generally want to have, um, in fact, let's turn off everything about the noise. Can I do that? Does this work? Yeah. Okay, so it's colored lower, higher, and oops. And now if I add that with the actual music or sound. So it's just it's just an added in thing. And the idea is if you do it right, you can make it kind of sound like the drum the the the, the hammer hit in a piano or the, the little bit of noise when a string is plucked or something. But I, this one is one where I really think less is more. And I, I don't have any really good feedback mechanisms where the noise, like the noise never goes through the filter on its own. Does the noise go through the filter? Wow. Let's, let's test that. I don't think the noise goes through the filter. Okay. Sorry. Lots of noise. No filter. Okay, now filter. Ah! I stand corrected. Noise does go through the filter. Which means if I let the noise last longer, we could hear how the filter changed it over time. Kind of cool. I didn't know I could do that. But oh, FM. I don't think the noise is affected by the FM. It should be, I guess, a little. Yeah. But AM, I think yes. I guess maybe that's kind of hard to say. Let's high pass. Maybe band pass. What's our filter look like? Oh, I'm not sure I believe that. That's notch filter. Okay, so no filter. Cool, no noise. Excellent. Turn these guys back on. Okay, I think that's the most complete coverage of the knobs and features of the synthesizer in game and development sense based drone runners. And again, this is all part of the social key. So normally you're playing a space game, flying around doing space gamey kind of things sharing maps with your friends and making maps of your own and on your own maps you can have your own music and to have your own music you have to have a way of playing the music and since the game has to be able to play the music it decided it should let you play the music too because you're a musician yeah you're so great oh you're so talented look mommy everyone can play the piano and it is polyphonic Um, and I think I may immediately do another one for the vocoder, but, um, you know what I didn't get into at all was, was the groove stuff. So here we have all this. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that in this film. It's too long. But in, once you've got your set of instruments, then you start putting them together into songs. And so, like, here is a song called Almost Good. We'll just play it. Uh, 
believe it or not, all of these instruments took part in this song somewhere along the line. Even though there's only one track here, you can have up to four tracks in a song. And what I think I'm going to do is make it so you can, well, you can delete tracks, but I'm going to think I'm going to make it so you can merge a track. Because that's what I end up usually doing is I'll contribute a new track it's not really very big or complicated and it's kind of silly to use up a whole track just for that it's not like i'm going to separately mix it or anything so just being able to kind of merge it into an existing track kind of like like there's this is the track that's accumulating the actual song and these are test tracks and when a test track sounds good enough to me and i need room for another test track i take my my favorite test track and i merge it in and now i've got a free track um so this is a timeline of the entire song, and currently instead of pinch zoom for some reason I'm using tap zoom. And what this is telling us, these vertical bars are moments in time when a loop was turned on or off. And these, I'm going to zoom in again, these green bars are more uh, notes from the sequencer that were played here. By the way, I can play along. Anyway, <laughs> see. low musical skills, as I keep saying. Um, so basically, if you were, well, at the risk of forcing you to hear this a second time, stop playing it. We'll start recording. So it's going to play the whole thing again. And so this is what a chord looks like, three bars next to each other. So that's a chord. And now, since we're recording, I can just start playing along. And it went ahead and allocated me to track two. And I can change instruments. Well, I heard a glockenspiel. And I'm still recording on my track. I'm just now a glockenspiel on my track. Anyway, you can see my track developing here. Now I can actually go over to loops, and while the loops right now are being turned on and off by that first track, I can go ahead and you know mess with that. I'm I'm a performer too, so I'll decide I want that loop on. I I want all these loops on. In fact, I don't want these guys on anymore. I only want mine on. I don't want any loops on. And now what's happened is my track has turned off a loop that was turned on by the other track. So we're sort of dueling here because the loops are shared by all the tracks. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like an ending. Okay, so I end the song, and um, now we play it back again. Sorry, I got a stuck note out of that. So here you can see my new track. That stuck note will stop eventually. That turns out to be a harder puzzle to solve than you might think, and I'm embarrassed to see that I still have it.
I'm kind of I, I'm curious to see whether or not those uh, loop triggers I sent in really did take effect. It's not something I ever ever really do. I think of the loop track usually as sort of a track up on its own, doing the basic you know structure of the song, as if I'm writing songs. I'm generating semi in tune musical content. Oh, there we go. So I do have some strikes coming. Let's see if they actually work. <laughs> 